Hello everyone, so in this video we're going to be looking again at texture segmentation. So this will be the, the last video on that particular topic. And um, the, the, the goal here will be to, to go again through kind of the, the, the process of using the grayscale coherence matrix to, uh, to get uh, texture segmentation and to see uh, um, a few small ways where we can improve the result of the segmentation from the uh, uh, very imprecise blocks that we had in the uh, previous video. So let's go to the notebook and um, here I've imported um, another image, one that is uh, a bit easier to, 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 uh, to process using, um, using the, the, the coherence matrix. So um, here this uh, image of a crossing. Um, the goal that we, that, we, that we have here is to uh, segment the, um, the crossing path uh, from the rest of the road. So this uh, looks rel relatively um, easy when, when thinking in terms of uh, texture, since we have a very uh, clear pattern um, of uh, so white and gray um, uh, pixels. Uh, with a very clear uh, orientation as well, which is the kind of thing that uh, that we uh, that we tend to like when we are trying to use um, the the coherence matrix. Um, so the first thing that I'm going to do here is just to convert it to uh, to grayscale. So we are working the grayscale coherence matrix, and here the of course we could um, we could for this uh, for for the, for this image uh, first just threshold uh, to get the, the, the white uh, the white parts and then find uh, some post processing to remove the, the smaller uh, the smaller uh, traces here and keep uh, and fill the gaps between the, 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 the larger ones uh, there but uh, here we are we, we want to, 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 to show how to use the texture information so we are going to be focusing on uh, on, on that um, and so we we get the uh, the grayscale image here, and the uh, next step is to um, to start trying to, to to get the descriptors of a region. So first, we are going to do the same things that we've done in the uh, previous video, uh, which is we determine a certain set of angles and displacements that we want to check. Um, we determine the properties that we want to uh, look at. Um, uh, and we uh, do the code to just cut the image in a certain number of uh, cells, which will have a certain size, um, so a regular grid. And for each cell in that grid, we uh, compute the, uh, the descriptors, so which are, are computed by uh, getting the grayscale coherence matrix and then computing each of the uh, given uh, properties. Um, so here we have, a, um, we, we will go and look at a set of different angles ranging from uh, 0 to, uh, to, to uh, 5 pi over 6, so by, by step of pi over 6, just to get a few different uh, angles. And for each of those angles, we look just at displacement of 50. And we can look, uh, for instance, at the dissimilarity, the uh, second mo angular second moment. And let's look at the correlation as well, so that we can uh, have the, the range of um, of different types of uh, properties that we uh, that we may want to, to use, and then at the end uh, we just uh, normalize uh, the um, we normalize by um, by feature of of, of, our, of our descriptors. Um, so let's do that. So. Um, this uh, kind of um, uh, of uh, computation can take sometimes a bit uh, a bit of time because for each um, for each uh, cell we have to compute all of those descriptors and recompute the coherence matrix. Uh, here I don't have so many cells, but if we of course uh, try to, to to use larger images or more cells, um, we'll have um, uh, more computation time. Um, so the next thing that we can do is uh, here visualize the different um, results that we have. And what we can see is that uh, so each block of six will correspond to the uh, six angles that we have here. And we, so we'll have first the six dissimilarities, then uh, angular second moments, then the correlations. And so we can see that with the um, 
the dissimilarity. We have very strong signal typically uh, somewhere in the, uh, in the crossing and depending on the uh, angle that we are using, we will um, have a stronger response from uh, the, 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 the places where, where we have a pattern cr um, in, in that angle. So sometimes uh, different uh, angles will give us, uh, so different parts of the crossing will give a stronger uh, response. Uh, here we can see that the um, ASM does not uh, do what we want at all and uh, it seems to be uh, detecting something um, in the, the bottom right region. So the, the, the crossing seems to generally be with lower values than the rest, so that may be useful. But we see that there is uh, a lot of noise in that, uh, in that uh, particular um, uh, in, those, in those regions of the image and that we have a strong signal here at the bottom right which clearly must be linked to the fact that uh, the uh, illumination is very different there, which may be uh, kind of uh, removing this, this, the signal of the pattern for this particular uh, metric. And the correlation, uh, as for some angles, is uh, gives us a, a good signal uh, in the crossing, but we can see that some parts of the crossing will be hard to, to, to get from using those, uh, uh, those metrics. Uh, and uh, the signal seems to be a lot more uh, noisy than for the dissimilarity. So in this case, the dissimilarity seems to be uh, really the best, uh, the best option. So we are going to just keep uh, that one to not add unnecessary noise to our signal. And then we'll, uh, what we'll do to, to, to kind of, uh, of try to, 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 to look at the, to get the final result is to um, take the, for, for each cell, the sum of uh, those descriptors um, and then I will resize that to overlay it on the, um, on the, original, um, the original image. So the, the reason we take the sum is because we see that in some, um, in some instances uh, for some angles the signal may not be uh, quite as strong uh, in, the, um, in the different uh, so in the cells that are part of the crossing, but overall there will always be uh, some of, um, like in the majority of the cells, uh, the, the signal will be stronger in the crossing than outside the crossing. So we expect that by uh, taking the sum, um, we will be able to, 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 to make sure that to, to keep really that uh, part of the signal and not to have too much interference from the rest. Another option that you could have would be to use the, um, the maximum value um, between those, um, those six. Um, but the problem there is that if we have uh, um, a cell uh, in, the, in the background that for some reason gets a strong signal in one of the uh, dimensions, then it will uh, uh, be very sensitive to, to, to that. We could use the median as well. Uh, the, um, the advantage of using the uh, mean is that it's quicker to uh, compute. And so we get this, uh, this overlay where we can see that we do have a strong signal, um, so a strong uh, uh, higher value values for the cells in the uh, regions of the crossing than in the background. And we can confirm that by uh, computing uh, the uh, OTSU threshold um, and to try to, to apply some thresholding to, uh, to, to our um, cells. And this gives us a mask that we can uh, once again overlay on the original image and we get something that is uh, relatively uh, good. Uh, given the kind of resolution that we have here, which is limited uh, by, uh, of course, the uh, size of the cells. So um, we can uh, kind of uh, sheet in terms of uh, resolution. Um, I've already resized it, here, so this one does not do anything. Uh, I think that was already good, yeah. Um, so we, we can uh, kind of um, sheet by here, uh, for instance, uh, using uh, some interpolation to try to, to smooth out the, um, the, 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 the signal. Uh, and we will get then something that is uh, a bit, uh, that looks possibly a bit nicer. Um, and that uh, kind of follows uh, things a bit better. It's still not, not uh, perfect, but uh, we can, uh, can try to, uh, to 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 use that technique to uh, to to get um, 
something better. So let's try uh, a third order because third order does not really uh, improve uh, on the on the linear interpolation. So this is kind of the maximum resolution that we can get uh, on this. It looks uh, smooth, but in fact the 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 true prediction that we have uh, here uh, is just the uh, the, the cell uh, blocks. So uh, anything we we add with interpolation is uh, is kind of uh, of just making it look nicer, but it, um, it does not really give us uh, a lot more information. Um, so what we can do to increase the, the, um, the resolution is to, uh, do to, 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 to use a smaller um, step size. So the thing is we could just, of course, try to, 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 to reduce uh, the, um, the size of cells, so to, to increase the number of cells um, like we could, uh, for instance, take uh, 40 and uh, 20. The problem that we will get uh, if we uh, just do that is that if we increase the number of cells, we uh, with that technique, we um, make the cells uh, smaller. And in this case, they are uh, sp actually smaller than the displacement that we uh, were, uh, they become smaller than the displacement that we are looking at. So our uh, grayscale uh, coherence matrix cannot, can no longer be computed. Um, and so we are going to, to, to have a problem where the, the pattern that we are looking at um, starts getting possibly um, larger than the region that we are looking. So we are not seeing the, 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 the enough information in one single cell to detect uh, the pattern. Still, we are getting some uh, fairly uh, decent uh, signal here. So we could still uh, have a look uh, at what we can get with some thresholding. And uh, as you can see, we, we do end up being uh, more precise, but um, we start uh, getting some, uh, it, it's becoming much more difficult for, for the algorithm to, to make the distinction between the, the pattern in the, in the crossing here and the, uh, the patterns that we get with the smaller lines uh, uh, over there. Uh, and that's because we reduce the displacement uh, that we are looking at in a coherence matrix and we reduce the uh, amount of information that each cell is uh, looking at. So another option uh, is to separate the, um, the, 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 the size of the cell from the uh, step that we are using to move the cell uh, around. So instead of moving by the size uh, at each time to, to make a regular grid, we will have some overlay uh, some overlap between um, between the cells. So um, let's first do it like that. Uh, wait, wait. Um, so um, I'm going to be using um, so a step that is half the size of the uh, of the cells. So that means that instead of moving uh, by uh, a full cell, we'll be mo moving by half a cell um, at each uh, step. And uh, what I'm doing here is that I'm pre-computing just the positions, the top left position of each of the, of the, of the cell. And I'm going to create, in the same way as before, a descriptor uh, array, which will have uh, the size, the, the number of cells in both dimensions, and the um, number of features in my uh, descriptor vector. Um, and for each of those cells, I will uh, compute the, um, the, the, the descriptors. And again, I can um, you know, uh, resize my um, my descriptors to the to the to the uh, original shape of the image and uh, do the uh, the overlay. And this time, I do I did increase the resolution in the same way as I uh, as I've done uh, previously. But now each cell is still looking at a region as big as they did before, which means that they are still capable of uh, correctly uh, making a distinction between the crossing and the smaller lines. And so we get something that uh, corresponds uh, much more to the, to the reality. Uh, we can uh, do the same, um, the same trick as before with the, um, with, with, with the, 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 the interpolation. And this time we get something that is uh, really nicer. So I think here the mode, uh, is this mode or border, I don't remember. Reflect. Yeah, that's better. So um, using reflect now to. Uh, so this is uh, this is interesting because here we can see kind of the effect of this um, 
of this board or mode on, on the result. So what I, what the problem I had, so if using um, a mode uh, constant, um, what's happening is that uh, when we get to the uh, border of the, of the image, we uh, pretend uh, that uh, there is just um, a constant value uh, around the, uh, the image. So we are padding the image with a constant value um, that will uh, typically be uh, zero. Um, and so what happens is that when we get to the, to, the, to the end of the image, well, there is no more pattern to detect for, for our um, grayscale correction matrix. And uh, we don't have a, a, re a response to the dissimilarity. We don't have a high value for the dissimilarity. And the, the regions close to the border are um, predicted as uh, not part of the crossing. If we use the uh, reflect, uh, so instead of padding with zeros, we are basically uh, acting as if there is a mirror on the border and just reflecting the values from inside the image outside of the image. But the, the consequence of that is that we know we do, we do have a, a dissimilarity signal, uh, a dissimilarity response in, in the, the, the border region. But um, here we can see that uh, it creates some, uh, some, some artifact because of the orientation of the um, of the uh, of the pattern here, where the region here is actually seeing the uh, the pattern from this part of the um, of the of the image, and therefore will uh, have the same kind of dissimilarity as what we have uh, here, and it will be uh, seen as part of the um, of the crossing. Whereas the region uh, here is actually seeing uh, mostly uh, things that are here in the road outside of the crossing and therefore are predicted as uh, not part of the crossing. And we have the opposite effect uh, happening here. So this is uh, th this kind of uh, decision on how to, um, how to um, use the uh, border region uh, can have some uh, pretty big inf in impact uh, on, uh, on, on, on the results. And uh, it's sometimes um, better to, uh, to basically just Ignore the part, the, the, the part in the borders to not try to, uh, to predict what it will be and to just say that we know that the result will only be uh, really uh, valid um, in the, in, in inside the cer certain, certain limits uh, within, the, within the image. We don't, if we are close to the border in par parts where the, the region may, may overlap with, um, with the border, then, then we are no longer uh, uh, very good. Um, in terms of our uh, results. Um, so that's it for, uh, for texture segmentation. This uh, is kind of the, um, the type of, of pipeline that you can use. There are uh, tons of other ways to go about texture segmentation, but this is the general idea always of uh, trying to uh, characterize the patterns that are present within a certain uh, region, a certain neighborhood of the, of the image. Um, trying to, to synthesize that information into a feature vector and then using that feature vector uh, for some post-processing segmentation um, or other uh, tasks. So that's it for this video and I will see you in the next one.